Welcome to Our Voices, powered by the Nassau Community College Foundation. My name is Natasha Nurse. I'm the owner and co-founder of Dressing Mermaid, co-host of Woke and Free, and the lifestyle editor of Plus Model Magazine. And this show is focused on highlighting the amazing work of powerful change agents who have a great message to share with the world. And today I'm really excited to be speaking with a woman that I love and adore. And who am I talking about? Taylor Wallace. She is a global explorer, millennial thought leader, body positivity warrior, and creator of The Fit Founder. And she is, uh, she's a trailblazer and so young. I mean, as also she created the global hashtag define your FYBS movement, she has been essentially creating uh, and designing the process of of entrepreneurship for her and has engineered a system that makes work travel accessible for anyone willing to commit to consciously creating their own lifestyle by design. And uh, with that, I think we should get to it. So Taylor, how are you? I am magnificent. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> That's the best intro anyone said. I love it. <laughs> Magnificent. With that, my dear, then <laughs> let's get started in having you break down for everyone listening how you became a global explorer, millennial thought leader, body positivity warrior, and of course, creator of The Fit Founder. <laughs> Loaded question. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so if I had to take it back to, I guess, what I would define as the most relevant uh, beginning, Um, it would be probably right after I graduated from college. um, I went to a small liberal arts school that um, is pretty um, consistent (laughs) with its ability to generate, you know, investment bankers, consultants, and and graduate students. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really realize it at the time. Um, but I had this very strong kind of influence into where I felt that I was supposed to go uh, after graduating. And I, I did that for the first you know, year and a half. I had a nice corporate job, moved to Boston, you know, cushy salary, all my friends are there. I'm like, this is awesome. This is awesome. This mm-hmm. is awesome. This is, this is still good. This is, this is good. This is, huh. And I kind of reached that point about you know, a year and a half into um, this cycle of, I, I guess the word would be like complacency, where I really started to uh, dissect the things that I thought were, were making me happy or making me feel fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I really unpacked those things, I realized there was nothing there. Um, so I started kind of asking myself you know, these questions, um, really focusing on, if I could literally write out a map of what my life was uh, optimally to look like, you know, what would it entail? Mm-hmm. And at first it was really hard for me because there's always that voice in my head that you know, this idea would come up and I would say, oh, that's not, that's not possible. That's not feasible. Maybe when I'm 35 or, you know, it's kind of this like little nagging voice that was telling me that these things that I wanted um, I, I needed to wait or, you know, they weren't achievable. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was around this time that I really began to um, take a break from looking inward and started to look, you know, um, externally with a little bit more intention. So I started finding people who were doing things that I thought were exciting, you know. Mm-hmm. So at the time, living in Boston, a lot of really cool like meetups that, uh, you know, uh, Harvard, MIT hosts, or you know, different um, affinity groups in the city, and I just began like networking like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, someone would give me their card with a business title I'd never heard of. Like, what does this person do? Like, let's find out. Let me take you to lunch. Let's connect. Um, so, fast forwarding a little bit, um, I got to a point where I was just so motivated by um, the people who I began to discover once I started looking for. Um, those who are living their best life. Mm -hmm. And I reached a point where I was like, okay, it's time. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how this is going to work, but I know exactly where I want to be and I'm not going to stop until I get there. Um, So with that, um, I had been working on a business kind of on the side with my brother, um, Mm -hmm. a tech platform. Mm -hmm. Um, And 
the, the stars aligned so perfectly that I ended up getting accepted into uh, a business accelerator program in Newark, New Jersey uh, mm -hmm. called Founders. Mm -hmm. And that was really the catalyst that just set everything in motion. Mm. Um, went through that program, uh, graduated, had you know, my business fully functioning, a solid team that was um, already working remotely throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And after graduation, I kind of had that, I guess, most founders reach where you're deciding, you know, where do I want to commit um, in terms of location-wise to, to nurture my baby? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the startup space, it's New York, San Francisco, mm -hmm. Chicago. But I just had this, like, fire that was really just, like, constantly being stoked throughout this, you know, growth process in the accelerator. And I went back to that list that I had made um, before even beginning the journey. And I looked at, you know, the things that I said I wanted out of my life, <clears throat> you know, how many of them I had achieved. And I guess, like, where I was in regards to some of the other ones. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the most blaring thing was you know, travel, 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 travel. I always knew that, you know, I wanted to spend, you know, at least a year traveling the world and, and kind of really digging deep within, um, you know, myself and my personal development journey. And um, I've always had my most significant life insights, mm -hmm. um, kind of traveling in that context. So, mm -hmm. you know, not going on vacation, but intentionally putting myself in environments or situations where I was, you know, to a certain extent, like inherently uncomfortable mm -hmm. and seeing what I would learn from, from those situations. Um, and so that's really how I got um the travel bug, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So I've, let's see, it's been about seven months now that I've been, um, you know, traveling and running my business remotely. Mm -hmm. um, and through that process, you know, the Fit Founder was born, um, which is essentially a platform for other digital nomads to, um, you know, make sure they're really um, optimizing and maintaining their physical, uh, emotional, and professional health. Mm. while traveling full-time mm -hmm. so a lot of words there but <laughs> <laughs> i love it phenomenal okay you are listening to our voices on the voice of nassau community college 90.3 whpc my name is Natasha Nurse, and my guest today is Taylor Wallace, a global explorer, millennial thought leader, body positivity warrior, and creator of The Fit Founder. So that was quite a journey, uh, <laughs> explaining um, kind of how you came to be who you are. But, I mean, that's essentially the question itself. So with The Fit Founder, essentially, what did you see that there was, an, I guess, a, a missing link or need for founders who are digital nomads that you, you know, as you called them? What, what are the services? What are the things that they need to, to be the Fit Founder that they need to be for their businesses and ventures to succeed? Yeah, awesome question. Um, so I, I think one of the things that um, immediately struck me as I kind of transitioned into the digital nomad life um, is how quickly um, we can fall out of our um, like patterns, mm -hmm. um, but not always in a good way. <laughs> so, you know, when you're home, you, know, you have your apartment that you you know where your closest grocery store is. You know where your closest gym is. You know, you know that special spot around the corner to get that, you know, organic, un, uh, like cold pressed coconut oil or whatever that thing is. Whatever the things are that you need to feel optimal, mm -hmm. you have the resources to make sure that they're always available. So that every day you are um, really prioritizing. Um, your physical well-being, which inherently impacts your, your mental and emotional well-being, which impacts your ability to be, you know, the best boss that you can be, the best problem solver that you can be. Um, and so when you're constantly moving around every month or every three weeks or depending at whatever frequency you're, you're traveling, you have to begin that process all over. You have to find a new gym. You have to find... Um, you know, a new grocery store in theory, mm -hmm. but depending on where you're traveling, um, they might not have, you know, 
kale. <laughs> they might mm-hmm. not have chia seeds, or you really have to, to search for it. And so when you're also trying to run or build or you know maintain your business, it's very easy for that to be the first thing that you kind of let let slip. Mm-hmm. And maybe you know when you're on vacation, you can kind of get away with you know, not working out for a week or um, kind of eating crap for a week or not mm-hmm. getting you know, the most optimal amount of sleep. Uh, for a week, but when this becomes your lifestyle, it's it, uh, you know you can no longer afford that luxury of, of letting your physical health um, you know kind of take a back seat. Mm-hmm. And so, mm-hmm. I began getting a lot of um, kind of outreach through social media and other channels um, of nomads who you know had either seen a post or a video or something, and you know had gone through some sort of alarm clock moment where they're like. I stepped on a scale for the first time today in X number of bumps. And like, I don't know what happened mm. or, you know, I've moved to this, you know, Island in Southeast Asia and they don't have this, they don't have that, you know? So what would you recommend for, um, you know, an optimal source of lean protein or to make sure I'm getting mm-hmm. the nutrients I need every day? These are all the foods that, that are available in my grocery store. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, it, it wasn't really sustainable <laughs> mm-hmm. to, you know, connect with each person to, you know, uh, dissect the, the dietary habits of wherever they were in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, but it definitely shown some light on the fact that this is a, a, a pretty um, universal problem, I mm-hmm. guess, um, you know, for nomads, um, depending how long you're traveling. It's like, okay, I know that I want to feel good now i want to feel good all the time mm-hmm. but i don't know where to start um mm-hmm. so i guess that was the first um so out of your yeah, own experiences, guess, uh, yeah. You know, to add to that, yeah, I would yeah. say for me, uh, you know, I started my company, Dressing Roommate, uh, about three years ago. And to be honest, I would say my health, uh, you know, I thought when going into entrepreneurship, I was going to be like, oh, well, I'm working, you know, from, you know, Long Island. I'm going to have plenty of time to go to the gym, da, da, da. You know, a lot of <laughs> when you are your brand, you're, you're spending a lot of time, you know, having calls and meetings and and you're doing the social media thing, right? And you you neglect, you neglect your health. And so I was just going to add that, like, to be honest, the fit founder idea, I think is even reaches beyond just the nomad because you could be straight up in your home just denying your health. <laughs> and uh, and like, yeah, like recently I was diagnosed with hypothyroidism and it was, and it mm. spoke to me about uh, kind of some of the things that I was experiencing in my body. And had I been more proactive and had I been more conscientious Anxious and mindful about not only what I was eating, but also like why my body was hurting and what was happening. You know, I I, right. I think that the 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 it's an easy uh, kind of line to pass of just not not caring enough about your body in in conjunction with all your entrepreneurial goals because you're like oh, I gotta be I gotta be hustling I gotta you know I gotta <laughs> gotta work hard. But guess what? If you're I not mean, alive, work. <laughs> yeah, like if you're not alive to work, then that's that's the end of that. Like. <laughs> So, um, you know, so I, I love this idea. Uh, definitely. Uh, let's uh, I've got so much to do. But first, you are listening to Our Voices. My name is Natasha Nurse. More with my guest, Taylor Wallace, a global explorer, millennial thought leader, body positivity warrior and creator of The Fit Founder. Next on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, We'll probably stay together. Probably? (laughs) It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, Okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. 
Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Our Voices on the Voice of Natural. 